Hello and welcome to 52 Weeks. This is week number 14. This week we're going to start into chapter 4, which is the parks and civic and open spaces. Uh, This is actually a very important chapter to look at in this month of April in 2019 because we're going to be looking at uh, the Great Harrisburg Litter Cleanup on Saturday, April 13th. That happens every year. And we're also going to be looking at Earth Day, which is going to happen on Monday, April 22nd. So these are two big events to think about in April and tie perfectly into our environmental spaces around the city. That relates back to Chapter 3 with natural resources and historic resources. So we looked at the preliminary ideas in chapter four in the first segment, and this segment now is kind of breaking up the things that are more in-depth based on the goals and objectives within uh, chapter four. We're going to continue on this idea of valuing social infrastructure and looking at goal number four, preserving and complete the vision of Warren Manning's plan. This is in understanding a complete master plan as a green space system and who is taking care of this and who's going to actually take charge of administering this and making sure that uh, this is cared to uh, all these years. So that's a big ask uh, of our government and our systems and the community residents. I thank all of those who are already out there and about taking care of the green belt and making sure that it's a uh, resource for everybody to use. But this green space system needs to consider all these elements. This is the roundabouts, the public parks, the campus highway entrances, plazas, boulevards, living streets, landmarks, and outlook overlook points that are around our city. This needs to be cared to. As we work on valuing the social infrastructure, we want to build on this legacy as this resource of ecology and recreation for 1.7 million people. It's very important to look at this as our park systems could be the envy of everybody in central PA if we think about it in a, a big sense of working well. So we, there's a diagram and it's in the uh, comp plan that's very important to think about just as conceptually. We've got the existing parks in Greenbelt, then we get a proposed city green grid, this this thing that's interlocking, and we get them together. It's this proposed living uh, green space system, this living system of recreation and living in a natural environment. Uh, within our city. This diagram is very important because it shows the necessary function of both our parks, the green belt, and our streets as our green grid. And all this comes together, and if it's properly managed, uh, the city's open spaces can be a distinguishing asset. So we've got to ask our officials to come forth and make sure that this is an asset that is uh, it's recognized and it's also tended to and maintained in a way that it's just not neglected for the next 100 years. We want to make sure that we build on this legacy of Warren Manning's uh, green belt and this uh, city as a park uh, idea. We look at this functioning of land use and valuation management. Uh, we're going to understand that to manage the excess supply of property, the city understandably has peaked or stalled. I, whoever, when you look at it, stalled at 50,000 people. We look at land use valuation management. We're going to manage the excess supply of property. This is very important because understanding where we're at at 50,000 people, give or take, and we peaked at 90,000 people just under that in the 1950s, there's space that we need to manage well. And we look at the 4,700 vacant housing units and and we can focus on a city that supports roughly 60,000 people. If we looked at that for our next 20 year plan of low, slow growth, knowing that we're not going to be growing in a great, huge way, but uh, how to maintain a healthy uh, growth pattern other cities have seen in, around the nation. So, this is very important to understand the right growth that we have and not just growth for growth's sake. Our focus in economic development over the years is like, we just need to continue to build and do whatever, continue to grow just at whatever cost. And I think we have to be very, very smart about what do we what do we consider the costs involved, the quality of life, do we maintain our environmental or ecological uh, re- resources, our environmental resources, our building resource, and also our people. So this goes back to triple bottom line. Why triple bottom line is important. It's not just about the money, the economics. We got to deal with working with the people, helping the people that are here, and the people that were um, that are going to be here in the future. We also have to deal with the environment and our infrastructure, uh, physical and environment. Or when we look at managing the uh, supply, we've got surplus land. This goes back to the shrinking cities discussion from last uh, segment. So we need to look at long-term land res- reservation and permanent ecological conservation. So we want to reserve land and use it well. We look at this, um, the areas for greening, that can be a focus, this is objective 4.2.3. Convert any surplus land to long-term ecological buffers and recreational space. 
So what does that mean? It means we have an open space system that we begin to catalog through GIS where our, what vacant land that we have. We have a land trust, which is long term, that works in parallel to a land bank, which is short term of the use of lands, lands that are available. And we can put them into a, a faster process to go and redevelop. Currently, talking to others who are in the city, it is a painful process to go through and try to get either a vacant property or vacant land because our city's view is and system supports a holding on to this until uh, every bit of money is extracted. And I also get that it's a time factor of administration. We should have a better handle on this that we can say, yes, this land can go right now to someone who's interested as a resident. And all of this should be looking back on how do we focus on a green space system, this green infrastructure. We look at the stormwater management section. Uh, we want to guide private investment away from any of these areas that we know of. So this is the 100-year flood areas, South Harrisburg with karst formations underground. This is the sinkhole-prone areas and also hazardous lands that are anywhere in the Paxton Creek or any railroad uh, spurs that are around the city or um, uh, hazardous areas. We should be doing better on that land, identifying it and actually use it in a way that benefits our residents. So we look at our stormwater management. Capital Region Water is that uh, entity that, that takes care of this. They have 134 miles of sewer pipes as well as 3,000 manhole covers around the city. And they also do wastewater treatment for our city and other boroughs in the advanced wastewater treatment facility. Uh, this is a long time coming for them to uh, actually operate and operate well from the Harrisburg Authority from long ago. Uh, that was never managed well. Uh, and we're trying to push into Man really good management and working with communities to do that. That's what their focus is. So as Capital Region Water works with the communities, we got to understand pollution remediation, dealing with stormwater runoff, impervious services. These are things that we need to con come to grips with as residents here in the city. So there's an $82 million effort to reduce sediment and nitrogen levels that discharge in the Paxton Creek and the Susquehanna River. This is an EBA mandate that's out there that we need to deal with. And part of this is education. This is, should be within our schools. Our schools should be talking about this. How do we live within the, the uh, this ecological region and be good stewards of the environment around us. The EPA has, uh, so the EPA is also looking at uh, the water quality, the air quality, the uh, green stormwater infrastructure, GSI, and urban tree systems. These are all should be coordinated together uh, in with working with C CRW and the city or some sort of entity needs to be looking at. And also the partnerships with all the nonprofits out there that take care of these things. So it's really important that the city and uh, is managing this, working with CRW and actually making sure that they're in one accord and partnering well with nonprofits out there, individuals who want to care for the environment. All of this should be one whole system that just works. Uh, we can get there. This gets right into ecological stewardship. So as these systems are set up, uh, how it's managed, we get into develop a healthy habit for ecosystems. And what we have to look at is how do we uh, look at our nat native plants? We got to work with water conservation, uh, low maintenance plants, pesticide freedom, uh, wildlife viewing, and support the local ecological uh, structures that are here. And this is one of the things is, as permaculture is developing an urban gardening in the city, I'm really hopeful that uh, this can really kick off and root itself within the education system in Harrisburg so that students understand that what happens in a stormwater drain or grate, that that's going out the Susquehanna, which leads the whole way down to the uh, Chesapeake Bay and out to the ocean. So having this whole systems thinking is very important. We just don't have um, the level of knowledge around our area, and it's pretty typical. We like to only see in our, what's in our immediate uh, zone. And we've got to look at a holistic thinking on this. And I believe all the education that can happen and our understanding and awareness that happens within the ecological areas around Harrisburg can actually benefit that. So we look at the ecological stewardship, building an economic development framework. We want to focus on the system of our public parks, civic and open uh, systems, how they all work together.